Welcome to the Empowerment Zone with Ramona Houston, where we zone in on black and brown relations and our journey to empowering our communities. Hello, welcome to the Empowerment Zone with Ramona Houston. And I am so delighted today that we have Dr. Juan Andrade uh, as our guest. Uh, Dr. Andrade is uh, president and CEO of the United States Hispanic Leadership Institute. He is a family friend, a member of the family. He's from my hometown of Brownwood, Texas, believe it or not. Uh, he grew up uh, with my uh, father, his oldest brother, Benny, played on my grandfather, Benny Will Houston, uh, baseball teams. His brother is uh, my daddy's classmate, the class of 1963. And so I'm just so delighted to have Dr. Andrade um, as uh, our our guest this morning. He is also uh, he has also received uh, a presidential award uh, from the U.S. under I believe the Clinton administration, and then also re received the Otsley Award from the uh, from the country of Mexico. And so he's a well-regarded leader in the United States. And uh, this week, uh, today is July 28th, 2020, we're celebrating the life and legacy of Congressman John Lewis, who is a giant among us. And Dr. Andrade was a staff member of uh, Congressman Lewis's for uh, three years. And Congressman Lewis uh, was very influential in not only gaining the right to vote for um, African Americans, but he also was very influential in the founding of the United States Hispanic Leadership Institute, which uh, Dr. Andrade explained this history to us. Hi, Dr. Andrade, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, hello, Dr. Houston. It's a pleasure to be with you again. Thank you. So um, tell us a little bit about your background growing up in Brownwood, Texas, and how you came to be uh, uh, the founder and president and CEO of the United States Hispanic Leadership Institute. All right. All right. Just, uh, I'll try to be uh, get through this as quickly as I can. And uh, uh, pardon my slow uh, drawl and twang and uh, you know, trying to, you know, tell this story as and uh, give it the uh, uh, the respect that it really deserves. Uh, it's been a, a great ride for me. I uh, have been doing this now for 50 years, and uh, I'm really glad that uh, within, I started off really with just being arrested the first time 50 years ago. Um, and, uh, uh, that kind of, that was my introduction to, uh, the movement, civil rights movement, uh, which then evolved uh, a couple of years later into the voting rights, uh, movement. And what happened was that after the Voting Rights Act was passed in 1965, uh, which was attributed, uh, in no small part to Congressman John Lewis. Uh, that he was very much involved even at, at that stage, as young as he was. And, uh, and when that, the Southern Regional Council uh, took the initiative to create a voter registration organization uh, to register African Americans in the South, what they would just refer to as the old Confederacy. And uh, so that was a primary focus of the organization that they created that was called Voter Education Project, VEP. And uh, John Lewis was hired as the executive director of VEP. And uh, in 1971, three Mexican-American leaders from Texas um, uh, went to Atlanta to meet with John Lewis to ask him about 
the possibility of expanding to Texas uh, because initially uh, VEP did not include Texas. Uh, but they said, we have a lot of African Americans in, in Texas and of course, a lot of Mexican Americans as well. Uh, but we have no organization that will focus on empowering our communities and uh, ask them to expand. And uh, from the get-go, John Lewis was a coalition builder. And uh, he didn't say why. Uh, he didn't ask anything about, you know, needing to be convinced. Uh, he immediately said, yes, that's a great idea. Uh, if you guys can find uh, someone to recommend, uh, I will gladly hire them and we can get this going. And uh, so I was called uh, by the leader of the three group of the three individuals. Uh, his name was Dr. Jose Angel Gutierrez uh, from Crystal City, Texas. And uh, you may remember him from our conference in Chicago in, in uh, 2019, uh, when we honored him as a national Hispanic hero. And uh, so he, he, he put the call through to me and says, you know, are you ready to come home? Uh, back to Texas, and um, and I said to do what? And he said, well, we're going to do voter registration. We're going to register Mexicans and Blacks in the state of Texas. And if you know him, uh, Dr. Gutierrez, that's the way he talks. Uh, we're going to register Mexicans. He didn't say Mexican-Americans. He didn't say African-Americans. He just said Blacks. And uh, I said, absolutely. And uh, so my wife and I packed our bags and uh, moved from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, where we were working on a farm worker program and um, moved back to Texas. And I started working for John Lewis at that time. And that was like January of, of 1972. And um, so I worked with, uh, with John. Um, I met him that year. Uh, we had a staff retreat and I uh, got to meet him and uh, talk about voter registration, how we do this. And so I learned from him what I would be doing the rest of my life. And uh, just like he made it his life's uh, work, it became my life's work as well. Uh, you can say that it was just contagious coming from John Lewis, that uh, there was nowhere else to go but to just put your shoulder to the wheel and do the same thing. And uh, little did I realize at the time that that was my real calling in life, that I had met the person uh, who would show me how, show me the way. And um, I knew what I, I knew why I wanted to do it, but you need to learn some of these things. So I learned from the best. I learned from the champion. And, uh, and um, you know, so he brought me on board and I stayed with, with him through up till the election of 1974. And, uh, and then uh, that's when I moved. Uh, I got a call to move to Ohio. And so that's what I did very, very reluctantly because I thought working with John Lewis was the best job uh, that a little Mexican kid could ever have in the state of Texas. And uh, I was very reluctant to leave. Uh, but as my mama had told me, uh, uh, son, when you grow up, uh, you need to get out of Texas, you know, and I said, why? And she said, well, because they don't like Mexicans here. You need to go somewhere, you know, where, uh, they might treat you a little better. And I said, where would that be? And she said, Ohio. And I thought, you know, no, <laughs> you know, where is that? You know? And uh, so here it is, lo and behold, I'm on my way to Ohio and I left the best job in Texas to do that. Uh, but it was in Ohio that I sat down to write the paper to create Midwest Voter Registration Education Project. When I did that, I called uh, two of my colleagues from VEP uh, who also worked with John Lewis. Uh, one was named Cheryl Marcus, and uh, he was my immediate supervisor, and uh, Wayne Nevue. Uh, Wayne Nevue was from Louisiana. And Cheryl Marcus was from Atlanta. And uh, they both uh, worked with John Lewis. And 
And uh, we were a team, the three of us. And uh, so I called them and about uh, the EP, about Midwest Voter Registration Education Project. And, uh, and John Lewis, you know, because I told him that I was structuring uh, using VEP as a prototype of what Midwest voter registration would be like. We organized ourselves, structured ourselves, just the way John Lewis organized VEP. And so he was very instrumental in giving us the, uh, the form, the shape, the focus, the structure to uh, create. Uh, an organization that you have come to know as United States Hispanic Leadership Institute. Um, and so that was the beginning of uh, our organization. And uh, it's, it's, you can trace it back uh, and uh, find our, our connection from the very genesis of the organization to John Lewis and VEP. And I say that only to say this, that as John Lewis is, is highly, highly regarded and deservedly so as the champion of, civil, of voting rights, uh, he is Mr. Voter Registration in my, in my book as a, he worked to um, promote voter registration and work for voting rights and uh, voter education and voter registration support. And uh, he ran for Congress when he left VEP and, um, um, and uh, went on from there to impact uh, our communities, African-American and, uh, and uh, Hispanic, uh, all over the country. Uh, when I left Texas in, the, in late 1974, Willie Velasquez, uh, the, uh, a legend in his own right, um, started organizing Southwest Voter Registration Education Project. And, um, and he turned to John Lewis as well to say, how do you do this? And, um, and of course, uh, uh, Willie Velasquez uh, took that at the advice and direction that he got from John Lewis and blazed the trail throughout the Southwest. And um, and just charted uh, charted the uh, the path of uh, Hispanic political empowerment that continues to this very day. That's why we at our national conference uh, now present the Willie Velasquez Trailblazer Award because Willie Velasquez was a trailblazer as well, just like John Lewis. We lost Willie Velasquez when he was uh, only 44 years old uh, in 1988. Uh, but, you know, the work was started and uh, he had uh, 14 good years and he put Southwest voter registration on the map and it became the, the premier uh, Hispanic empowerment organization in the country and that work uh, continues even today. That's part of Willie's legacy, but Southwest voter registration is part of John Lewis's legacy, just like our organization, United States Hispanic Leadership Institute, is part of John Lewis's legacy. What he did to empower African Americans, it's, uh, you know, it's legendary. What people need to know, though, that he did as much for uh, Hispanics as he did for African Americans. Uh, just between our two organizations of, of Southwest Voter and USHLI, we have registered over 5 million new voters to participate in the electoral process. And since our organization started, other organizations have also uh, gotten started to organize themselves. None are as old as we are, of course, but, you know, they are fruit from our labor. And then that's the labor that uh, emanates from John Lewis and um, when he uh, organized Voter Education Project out of Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you for sharing that history. Now, when we talk about um, 
the three men that you stated went to Atlanta to meet with John Lewis. Could you tell us the names of those individuals? Yes. Uh, one was a county commissioner in San Antonio, uh, Commissioner Ed, uh, uh, Commissioner Albert Pena, Albert Pena. The other was State Senator Joe Bernal, B-E-R-N-A-L. And uh, he went on later to serve uh, on the State Board of Education um, because of his, you know, focus on education, uh, which back in those days uh, left much to be desired as far as Hispanics were concerned, uh, because our history was essentially omitted from the history books uh, in Texas. And uh, Joe Bernal dedicated himself. Uh, to uh, change in that. I should mention also that Joe Bernal uh, became a member of the board of directors of VEP, uh, John Lewis's organization. The third was Dr. Jose Angel Gutierrez uh, from Crystal City, uh, who was organizing uh, there as well. And they organized the Mexican American Youth Organization in Texas. Uh, to get young uh, Mexican Americans registered to vote, organized, and uh, and start fighting for their own rights, and uh, and it was through them that you know, that was my baptism into the movement. Hmm. Yes, Doctor Gutierrez. Not only is he founder of Mayo, he's also a historian too. Yes, he is. He's a yeah, prolific. Yeah. Right, right. I think I have all of his books. <laughs> and yeah, I had to get a new bookcase. <laughs> yeah, it's great that you honored him at USHLI in uh, 2019. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the leadership legacy of John Lewis in terms of your working with him. Uh, what was it like working with him and what did you learn from his leadership? Well, it was interesting, uh, and I and quite honestly, I adopted the same uh, style. Uh, John uh, was uh, more like a macro, uh, like a macro uh, manager type. You know, he turns you loose. You know, you go out there and you learn. You teach yourself. You know, you got to learn the ropes. Uh, if no one's going to just teach you the ropes. You got to go and learn the ropes on your own. And I had a whole state to cover. And uh, so I took off and going into communities across the state of Texas and, and, uh, and without knowing who I was looking for, I knew what I was looking for, but that person had no name. I had to go find that person. It's very much like a needle in a haystack. You drive into a town and you start asking people about uh, anyone uh, who talks about voter registration or is interested in doing voter registration or is somehow involved in the community. Um, and uh, they would give me that name and I would find that person and uh, talk to them about organizing a, a voter registration drive. And of course, they were always uh, glad to do it, you know, and uh, they just needed a little bit of help. You know, the spirit was willing kind of thing. Uh, you know, but what they needed were resources, you know, and VEP, you know, had resources uh, to provide uh, some financial aid, uh, some materials, posters, buttons. I remember one poster in particular uh, from VEP that John Lewis put together, and uh, it was just uh, hands uh, that were picking cotton. And uh, the the poster said, hands that used to pick cotton can now pick our officials. <laughs> and that was, you know, and so taking that sign to Texas, uh, it was it worked uh, magically because uh, we all pick cotton in Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, Mexicans, Americans and African-Americans side by side fields all over Texas. You know, we, we knew them all and we picked cotton, you know, from you know, the Gulf Coast and up to the Panhandle around Lubbock and Amarillo and, and everything in between. And everything in between means about seven to 800 miles mm -hmm. long because the state from north to south is 900 
miles. And uh, so and there we were in the fields all the time. And uh, so the poster, you know, uh, worked very well. And uh, but just having someone there to kind of uh, as a catalyst, that was a role that I played, just getting people together, talking about empowerment, sharing with them demographics, because one of the things you learned that I learned at at VEP was uh, research, the value of research, um, because, you know, we tended to generalize a lot. Uh, well, how many are we? Oh, there's a whole bunch of us. Well, you know, bunch means what? <laughs> you know, but when you say we have this many and you throw out a number and then you, you, you uh, correlate that to voter turnout in the last election that you researched, and, and I personally would go back 20 years to find a trend, you know, so that I could speak intelligently about a trend in their community over the last 20 years, what voter turnout was, what the margin of victory and, or defeat was, and how our community had the potential there to make winners out of losers and losers out of winners. And that worked, and that got people uh, involved. It attracted those who were willing. A lot of young people, a lot of young people, and uh, that responded to that. And uh, that's how we started uh, uh, the whole movement in Texas because of that work uh, that uh, emanated from VEP with John Lewis's support. The other thing too was uh, not just macro management. I trained our staff just the very same way that John trained us. Very same way, identical. Um, and uh, it, and then the, the other, uh, you know, was uh, the way he conducted meetings. You know, John uh, was very, uh, he knew what he wanted, uh, but he wanted you to want the same thing. And so he didn't tell you what you wanted. He got it out of you. I like that, you know. So you know, and so it, his his method, you know, also worked very well. And I tried to as best I could to pattern myself uh, and the way I conduct meetings, much the same way as John Lewis did. And of course, as everybody knows now, that he was that young twenty three year old uh, that spoke there at the Lincoln Memorial uh, on that day uh, with um, Dr. Martin Luther King uh, in the I Have a Dream speech, um, you know, setting up that speech uh, uh, with John Lewis and uh, in his speech at the age of 23. And um, and, and what's funny was the the story goes that they actually had to tone it down a little bit <laughs> because, uh, yeah, uh, John Lewis was very, very fiery and articulate, and he he made no bones about what he was committed to, what he believed in, and uh, but you know he, he delivered uh, a great speech that day. Well, you know, so he he too had that uh, public speaking ability and spoke with authority, knowledge, with passion, and uh, said things that, you know, that resonated with people. And, uh, and that just became part of uh, his story and the impact that he had on people. So what about working with, um, Oh, with Willie Velasquez, uh, what did you learn from his leadership? Oh, Willie was uh, one of a kind uh, also. Uh, he, uh, he too was very, uh, very passionate, very articulate. And uh, he had an odd uh, way of uh, enunciation. Uh, it, he had no Texas drawl. He had no twang. You know, and uh, you don't find too many people in Texas without a twang, you know, unless they were imported uh, from the north or something like that. 
they have an apostrophe after their first letter uh, that is usually an O. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and so they don't speak the same way. But um, Willie Velasquez was uh, just unusual and and that he would say the simplest, simplest thing in such a way that it was the first time you ever heard it. Things that you have heard before, but you had not heard it that way. And that was just his style of, of speaking. But Willie Velasquez was also a, a, a very uh, grassroots type. Uh, he, he, you know, today is very hard to find volunteers to do voter registration, to do get out the vote. Uh, that's why it is so expensive. You know, to do voter registration, it takes millions and millions of dollars every year, every every election, to do voter registration. Willie Velasquez and I, and I did it the same way as Willie. We did not pay volunteers, and Willie Velasquez was not did not pay volunteers. He recruited people to volunteer, and he trained volunteers on how to do voter registration, and. He, he diffused some conventional wisdom uh, too. Like uh, we had some joint training. When I was starting to be a Midwest voter, we would sit down with Southwest voter and Willie Velasquez would conduct some training. And he would say, now, when you get ready to launch a voter registration drive, you know, you want people to know, but you don't want to publicize it. Don't publicize it. And so the, obviously the question was, <laughs> why not? Uh, what better way is there to let people know? He said, well, there's nothing wrong with letting people know, but you let everybody know. So the opposition knows what you're doing, what you're going to be doing. You talk about a goal. You want to register a thousand new voters and you can be successful in registering a thousand people. And guess what? What happened? Nothing happens. It changes nothing. Why? Because the other side went and registered a thousand more of their side and neutralized your thousand. So nothing changed. You didn't move the needle. The landscape remained the same. And, uh, you know, so uh, don't go advertising what your, what your plan is. Work below the radar screen. You know, and do person-to-person -person contact, communication, knock on doors yourself, and uh, and you know, and and uh, let the and let the people know what it is you're doing and why, and uh, ask them to participate, and they will. And Willie Velasquez would personally walk down the street and knock on doors. That's why at his funeral, uh, on the way to the cemetery, the streets in San Antonio in the neighborhoods were lined with people with signs saying, gracias, Willie. Thank you, Willie. You know, thank you, Willie. And uh, you don't see that all the time. You don't see that very often. And uh, even less now, you know, but, you know, but this was 1988 and people already knew that Willie Velasquez had made a difference. Why? Because he probably knocked on their doors personally. And uh, the other thing was too, Willie Velasquez talked about redistricting. He said, you know uh, why we can't win? You know why we don't win city council races, school board races, county board races? Why? He says, because of gerrymandering. Well, I had studied gerrymandering in school, too. I knew what it was, but I didn't know how you changed it. You know, uh, how do you... Uh, you know, um, uh, draw districts more fairly, more equitably, you know, to where our vote is not diluted. And, um, and, and Willie Velasquez said, this is how we learned, how we found out. We kept running campaigns. We kept doing voter registration drives. We ran good candidates, you know, that were really from the community and we lost every time, you know, and he, and he said, and this, he really did say this. I feel like Charlie Brown. 
I feel like Charlie Brown, you know, in the little cartoons when he says, uh, because he loved to play baseball, uh, Charlie Brown. And uh, you always see him with a glove, with a mitt, and a uh, little baseball cap. And Charlie Brown would say, I, I don't understand why we keep losing when we are so sincere. <laughs> why do we keep losing when we are so sincere? And we live with us, you know, I got the feeling that way, time after time, drive, voter registration drive, after voter registration drive, nothing changed. And we were so sincere. And uh, then he discovered redistricting. And he, he got a lawyer, brought him on staff, and he said, we got to sue these people. That's what's wrong. We can't win the way the boundaries are drawn, the way the boundaries are drawn. And so Willie says, wherever we, you know, let's look at these communities where we are, you know, 70% of the population, 75% of the population, and there's, you know, seven members on the school board and six are white. And there's five members on the city council and four, if not all of them are white. Why can't we win? Because the way the district boundaries were drawn. And, um, you know, and so he started suing. And he sued school boards and he sued states for legislative districts. He sued city councils for city council districts. And that just became part of his, uh, his focus, his mission. And uh, he really, uh, you know, because back in those days, uh, groups like MALDEF, Mexican American Legal Defense, uh, was not created until 1968. And also here it was just four or five years later, and they, they quite didn't have the, you know, the ground game that you needed uh, to, uh, do a lot of redistricting because they were also involved in employment discrimination, education disparities, housing, uh, you know, disparities and things like that. So MALDEF was all over the place. They weren't single minded about voting rights. And Willie was very single minded about voting rights. And even to this day, uh, it started with Willie Velasquez. During his uh, lifetime, uh, Southwest voters uh, filed over 40 lawsuits and were undefeated. They won every single lawsuit during Willie's lifetime. And today, they have filed over 200 lawsuits and have never lost a lawsuit to this day. And so transforming the political landscape was just part of Willie's strategy. It was part of his wisdom. And that's something that I learned as well uh, from Willie. So our first year in Chicago, uh, you know, in 1982, uh, we started in 1979 doing uh, research on political capability and compiling political demographics for the Midwest. The big focus was Chicago. The census was in 1980. Uh, the data came out in 1981. The lawsuits were filed immediately against the city of Chicago, the state of Illinois. And we were involved in doing the research for that. Because why? I learned the value of redistricting from Willie Velasquez. That went, and then of course, I, uh, when we started what was then Midwest voter registration, uh, I asked Willie to be one of our charter members. And uh, they, were my, they were myself and three others that I asked to be charter members of Midwest voter, voter registration education project. And Willie Velasquez was one of the four that uh, incorporated the organization. So I know that the United States Hispanic leadership um, has the largest conference in, uh, in terms of developing uh, Latino leaders and does voter registration and education uh, and get out to vote. It also uh, works with the census and trying to get a, 
good count. And with you being the founder and president and CEO, what do you want the legacy of USHLI to be? That we were single-minded that, you know, what we have done, you know, we're, and our, through our leadership programs, for example, uh, the first program that, that, that we launched at USHLI for leadership training was one that I actually started when I was with John Lewis. It was our, it's called our grassroots leadership development program, where it's a nine week program. Three weeks you, you focus on city government, three weeks on county government, three weeks on school government. And those nine weeks, each, and you meet nine times, three and three and three, three hours each meeting for a total of nine. For nine hours, we meet with city officials, nine hours with county, nine hours with school. And I started that program in 1974 when I was with John Lewis. And that program still continues today. It's part of the legacy of John Lewis and BEP and this part of our own legacy at USHLI. Participants that we have had in that program have gone on to run for local office. They have been elected to school boards, to city councils, to county boards. They have become mayors. They have become judges. And one of the staff that I brought on board uh, back in the uh, early uh, 80s, 1980s, was Luis Gutierrez. Uh, who ran for city council in Chicago after he resigned from our staff and uh, and was elected, served six years, and then went on to run for Congress um, in, uh, in 1992 and served until this last session. He finally um, retired uh, from Congress, but uh, I think he served about 26, 26 28 years. Uh, and uh, so that's where we are. And uh, but leadership development, you know, it, it, it was about learning more about how government works. It's one thing to learn about elections, but elections are every two years or every four years. Government is three sixty five, <laughs> you know, twenty four seven. As uh, we say in Spanish, el gobierno nunca duerme. Government never sleeps. Government never sleeps. There's always somebody at the switch. And you need to know who they are because they work for you because you're the taxpayer. And just as importantly, they need to know who you are. And that's what that program does. That, it, it, you know, it's 27 total hours of dialogue with those officials who run our city those who run our counties and those who run our schools. And because people will tell you, well, I know who, who, I know who our public officials are. And I say, okay, name, name as many local officials as you can. Name the most, the 15 most influential, powerful leaders in city government. And that when you finish that, Name 15 of the most powerful leaders in school government and the 15 most powerful in county government. That's 45 people. How many can you name? And, you, and then they quickly realize, I don't know as much as I thought I did. I said, well, when you finish this program, you will meet those 45 people. Yes. In these nine weeks, you will. And they will meet you. So next time you're at the grocery store or standing in line to check out and you see this person behind you or in front of you, he's going to know, he or she will know who you are. You will know who or she is uh, because you met. And so you don't waste that opportunity to interact with them, you know, because you met them. You, now you know them because but before you started the program, you knew two or three city officials two or three school board and school you know, officials and two or three maybe county officials. And, you know, that's, so that's a total of six or nine. But when you finish this program, you're going to know up to 45. And uh, that began to uh, 
catch on and transform communities uh, across the, the country. And it bridges that gap between government officials and their constituents. Mm -hmm. it, you know, because they were very polarized. And the government officials realize that it's very hard to get people involved, to engage them. And uh, through this program, uh, we kind of begin to bridge that. So that's a program that goes back to VEP and one that has been part of USHLI. And that's part of our legacy. And it's good to know that though, that program uh, still exists uh, yes. today uh, and that you all are still doing uh, that great, great work of connecting communities uh, to government. Well, Dr. Andrade, I'm so happy that we had the opportunity to talk uh, about uh, the legacies of um, Congressman John Lewis, you know, and the uh, legacy of Willie Valesquez and, and, uh, and the Southwest Voter Registration Education as, uh, Education Project, as well as your legacy at uh, USHLI, the United States Hispanic Leadership Institute. You are one of our uh, giants in our community and and to know that you're from uh, my hometown of Brownwood, Texas is very inspiring. And I know you've inspired uh, many, many, many leaders who are in government and politics, as well as those that went into other uh, sectors, such as the private sector and uh, went into uh, the nonprofit sector. And we thank you for your leadership. We thank you for your commitment to the community. Uh, and we thank you for your commitment to developing our country. And uh, we, we will continue uh, to build upon your legacy, the legacy of, uh, uh, of <clears throat> of Willie Valesquez, as well as the legacy of Congressman John Lewis. Thank you so much for being my guest today. If, if you'll let me say just one last thing about John Lewis. Yes, sir. That, you know, this is also a reflection on him and the impact that he had, uh, that the two leaders that he mentored that worked like myself, that I was on his staff, Willie Velasquez, uh, that he came in to help him set up voter, Southwest voter registration. The the three of us, John Lewis, Willie Velasquez, and Juan Andrade, were all honored at the White House by a president and received a presidential medal for our service to the nation. Mm. Willie Velasquez and I by Bill Clinton and John Lewis by Barack Obama. Mm. Now, and that's just part of John Lewis's legacy you know, the, the fruit that he bore, you know, that, you know, we, we are products of his love and his labor and his passion and uh, part of his legacy. And that's one of the things for which I am most proud. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Andrade. Love you much. <laughs> A special thank you to the incredible team of the Empowerment Zone. Terry Ungully, theme song, Nad Works, digital support, and of course, our featured guest.